And it is such a great place to visit, not only to honor Yogi's legacy, but also there's a ton of stuff for kids of all ages to get involved with to help them learn a little bit more about baseball. We're going to give it just a few minutes here as more people log on for this special night. Um, I hope everybody is safe. I hope everybody is doing well. Just wait a few minutes. I hope you guys don't mind. I dressed up like many of us now. We have nowhere to go, but hey, why not put on a pretty dress and stand in your living room? All right, we have more people joining, so we'll give it just a few more seconds, and we will get this program underway. I have to be honest with you, this is my first virtual awards dinner, so wish me luck. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, for those of you who don't know and those that were supposed to be at this year's awards dinner, it was supposed to take place Monday in the city, but due to COVID-19, that along with so many other events, had to be canceled. And first and foremost, we hope everybody is staying safe out there and healthy, not even just in New York City, but nationwide and worldwide. Coronavirus has struck us all in different ways, but if you can stay healthy and do your part, that is by far the most important. As we know, Yogi Berra won 10 World Series championships over 18 seasons with the New York Yankees. And while he'll be known for his play on the field, he'll also be known for some of those yogiisms. And one of them is, it ain't over till it's over. And though this year's awards dinner is happening in a new way, they will be back next year. That date is going to be April 23rd, 2021. So continue to go to yogimuseum.org to find out more about that event if you'd like to be a part of it. Also, you can find more information about some virtual programs that they have there for kids from ages to grade school all the way up to high school. So there's a lot of great stuff on there. But without further ado, let's get this award ceremony underway. So let's toast to Yogi and all of this year's award winners. I'm going to take a sip. Why not? Now, for those of you who do not have the program on hand, which is just about everybody, I will tell you some of the award recipients that were going to be honored on Monday night. We'll start with CeCe Sabathia. Everybody knows the lovable left-hander, just retired last year. He's getting this year's teammate award. Bruce Beck of NBC4 in New York City. He's one of the hardest working men in the game. He's the recipient of the Humanitarian Award. Jeff Idelson, he was the president of the Baseball Hall of Fame for many years, and now he has started the ground. Pennsylvania was calling. That wasn't planned. I don't know who it could have been. Uh, Jeff Idelson, he will be honored as well. And Arlene Howard, uh, author, and of course, Elston Howard's wife, she was going to be given the Carmen Berra Award. She's not going to be with us on the live tonight. However, she sends her regards to everybody, and we hope we can get her at the awards dinner next year. Yogi was a man of integrity, as we all know. He valued respect, sportsmanship, perseverance, and excellence. And I think our very first guest encompasses all those things. Not only was he a friend of Yogi, a friend of the museum, and I am honored to call him a friend of mine. It is none other than Yes Network's John Flaherty. Now, full disclosure, we went over this. Let's see if we can pop Flash on the live. Oh, I see him there. John, how we did you it. doing? We did it. I'm doing great, Meredith. How are you? I'm good. I'm proud of us right now. I really am. It only took one trial run a few days ago. We figured it out. My first time ever on Instagram Live. So thanks for having me. So happy. Now, you're typically the MC of this event. This year, you're just joining on the live. Were you more nervous the years that you hosted or nervous getting on the live tonight? Oh, definitely more nervous the first time I hosted this uh, this banquet two years ago. And, you know, when you get asked by everybody at the museum, such great people and what they do. But when Yogi Berra's name is involved and you were an ex-catcher, although it's just a backup catcher for the Yankees, there's a lot of pressure there, Meredith, to get up and, and try to do the right thing. So 
I guess I did a nice enough job. They invited me to do it last year. And unfortunately, uh, we're not able to be live in the city at the plaza this year. Would have been this week. Uh, but we look forward to next year. And I appreciate you doing this and having me on and maybe give you some memories. I love it. Uh, you, you mentioned the two years that you hosted. Now, what were some of the memories from that event? from those events. Does anything stand out over the years? When I think back to last year, Bernie Williams closing it out, that's something I'll definitely remember. Yeah, I, I just think that the, the they do a great job at the museum putting on a, a first-class event. First of all, at the Plaza, you have musical guests. You mentioned Bernie Williams. Uh, you know, Joe Torrey received an award. I mean, it's just a, a star-studded event. And if you have anything to do with the Yankees, it's a, a can't-miss event. And uh, again, when you get up there and you MC, and you know this as well as anybody, you want to be the person just to keep it moving and get the main attractions up on the stage. So uh, lucky enough to do that the last couple of years. And you're a main attraction tonight, so thank you for jumping on this. Also a past award recipient, our boss, John J. Philip Kelly. Do you think he's watching right now? I hope so. I hope so, too. Now, I know you spent a lot of time with Yogi over the years. Is there one yeah. story that stands out to you? Yeah, no doubt about it, Meredith. Uh, I made the team in 03 as a non-roster player, and I didn't find out I made the team until the fifth inning of the last spring training game. And Joe Torrey called me into the office with Brian Cashman, said, congratulations, you made the team. We're leaving after the game to go to Toronto to open up the season. Uh, I didn't play in that series I played in the Tampa Bay series right after that on the road and caught Roger Clemens won the game got a hit or two and when we came back to Yankee Stadium I don't know if it was a workout or if it was opening day I walk in the clubhouse and Yogi Berra is sitting in my locker in my chair and my first thought was I must have done something wrong here and I walked over and I said what's up Yogi and he said look kid I just wanted to let you know I was watching you did a great job and I just wanted to let you know that I, I thought you did a good job winning that game. And he got up out of the chair. He walked away. I didn't see him the rest of the day. And yeah, I'm just blown away that Yogi Berra would make the drive from New Jersey. And I'm sure he had other things going on. But he wanted to spend a few minutes with me just to let me know that I was watching. And he appreciated the effort that I gave. He loved the Yankees more than anything. And he loved to teach more than anything. I think back to the spring trainings when I was there. Yogi was such a staple. And he would always be the guy in the clubhouse that everyone else seemed to gravitate towards. Yeah, there's no doubt. And being a catcher, we got even luckier because Yogi would come with us during the day uh, to watch us go through our drills, to give us some advice, uh, some of the things that he was thinking about during his career. So, uh, you know, this catcher, is a, it's a tight fraternity. You know, you put that, that equipment on, you go back behind the plate, you know what it feels like. And Yogi made all of us, and even the guys who didn't make the team, the minor league catchers, he made us feel like we were part of that legacy. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget him for that. From the first moment I met him, he made me feel like I was part of the Yankee catching legacy. And it doesn't get much better than that, Meredith. I can't imagine I'd be telling everyone, do you know that Yogi told me this? Do you know that he said this to me yeah. once? That would be a memory I would have for him. Now, as far as your broadcasting career, one of my highlights of the year is always going to the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center. We do a show there, a hot stove yes. show, every year, and they have a crowd. It's a great facility. Do you enjoy just walking through and looking some, looking at some of the stuff that they have from Yogi? Yeah, and it's amazing year to year. There's so many new things. There's the things from Yogi in his career, and we've seen those in the past because we're so lucky to go every year. But the museum is constantly changing and updating and you know upgrading, and uh, it's a great thrill to do that. But I think more importantly, we know everybody at the museum. We know what a great job that they do in their community. Um, and then we get a live audience. You know, For us, doing a hot stove show, uh, that's pretty exciting. So one of the highlights of the year again. Flash, this is a sem it's a live audience. You're encouraged to ask questions here. There are two questions here. Let's see uh, if we can find any questions that are... Okay, somebody wants to know, in your mind, what's the most impressive thing about Yogi's career? Wow. Uh, probably All the longevity. <laughs> yeah, I, everything about it. But, you know, I think about how hard it is to go behind the plate and catch uh, during a championship season. And then you think about what Yogi did 
with all those postseasons and all those World Series and uh, the ability still to swing the bat and drive the baseball at the end of some of these years when you know the conditions were a lot tougher than we we had it as modern players. So uh, the enormity of it, you know, and I had heard so many stories and watching uh, Yogi hit, you know, if you threw it up there, it didn't matter matter if it was above his head or down by his shoe tops uh he was going to find a way to put it in play and put it in play pretty hard flash great stuff thanks for kicking us off tonight my pleasure thanks for having me and i look forward to being a part of the yogi Berra museum awards a year from tonight uh we'll look forward to that in the city next year and that, that date is april 23rd 2021 i will talk to you later flash we will move on to the next guest. For those of you that do not know, the museum opened in 1998. It is on the campus of Montclair State University. It's currently closed, but don't worry. You can still go on their website. There's plenty of virtual programs that you can get involved in, take a tour of the museum. They always have new exhibits that are coming in and out. So don't forget to visit yogiberramuseum.org. Our next guest is Jeff Idelson. He was the president of the Baseball Hall of Fame from 2008 to 2019. And he's now the co-founder of Grassroots Baseball. Let's see if we can find Mr. Jeff Idelson. There he is. Perfect. Oh, I see you on there, Bernie. I might pop you on in a little bit. I love this as the uh, little snag and the technical stuff is happening. There's Jeff Idelson. How are you, my friend? Hey, I'm doing great, Meredith. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. So congratulations first on your award. I apologize. I can't give it to you, but just know it's there. <laughs> hey, just getting to visit with you here today is good enough. Thank you, Meredith. As a guy that was the president of the Baseball Hall of Fame for a lot of years, I imagine you've had a ton of interactions, not only with Yogi, but with everyone at the museum. Yeah, I know that's a big part of the job. And uh, spending 25 years in Cooperstown gave me all sorts of opportunity to make uh, lasting friendships with a lot of the all-time greats. Many would be, I had, of course, the opportunity to work for the Yankees before that, so that was great breeding ground for going to Cooperstown. Do you remember the first time you met Yogi? <clears throat> I do. I mean, the first time, I had met him a couple times in New York, uh, but got to know him better in Cooperstown. I started on the day that Phil Rizzuto was inducted in 1994. That was my first day there. And, uh, you know, I remember talking to uh, Phil and Yogi afterwards, and uh, they had played uh, golf earlier that day, and Phil uh, left a putt short, and his only scooter could do, oh, Huckleberry, how could you leave that putt short? To which Yogi responded, hey, Phil, everybody knows 70% of all uh, all putts left short don't go in. And I'm thinking, okay, this is Yogi Berra. And I imagine you got a lot more of those stories as the years went on. Absolutely. I mean, there was never a shortage with uh, Yogi and the other guys, uh, uh, and, of course, he's so well-known for the stories. But this is a guy that just loved people. He loved being around people as well. And the museum that Carmen and he built, uh, that Eve and Joni and the staff there are now operating a second to none, very comparable to uh, any museum in the country and a great off-post for Cooperstown if you want to see all things related to Yogi and the Yankees. How often would you get to go to the museum in Montclair? I've been there a lot. I've been there a bunch. It's a great museum, and I was there for the rededication a number of years ago uh, with Whitey and Yogi, and was looking forward to going back and seeing the Negro Leagues exhibit, uh, which I'm hoping I have that opportunity to do in the not too near future. That is a really cool exhibit. They had it up. They were just building it when we did our last hot stove show there in January. It's something to see for sure. I know they have some aspects of it on the website. Was there one thing in particular in that museum that you were like, wow, I can't believe that this is here? I think a lot of early, uh, the early history of Yogi, there's not a specific artifact, but the way that his story is told, and you get to understand so much more about him as a human being. We all know about the Yogiisms. Some people know he was a three-time MVP and a prolific home run hitter and a great receiver and uh, all the championships. But it's what he meant to people and how many lives he touched, both he and Carmen, that really give you a full appreciation of just how special this guy was. Is there one yogiism that really gets you? Well, you know what? Uh, there's a bunch that I like. There's one that he told me, uh, and only me, that I, that I have fun with in Cooperstown. One year, about 12 or 13 years ago, Meredith, <clears throat> Saturday morning, it's about 6.15, 6.30 in the morning, I walk over to the Otisaga Resort Hotel where all of the Hall of Famers stay, get a cup of coffee as I'm getting ready to start the day. 
walk out onto the back veranda overlooking this beautiful lake, completely empty other than a number of high, high back white rocking chairs. And there's one guy sitting in a chair and it's Yogi. He's the only guy up at six in the morning. So I go and I sit next to him. He has his coffee and I have mine. And he, uh, you know, just uh, we're sitting there and he's not saying much and says to me, uh, hey, Jeff, how come it seems to rain every year during Hall of Fame weekend? And I explained to Yogi, look, we're at the base of this nine mile long lake. We're between the, uh, the Catskills and the Adirondack Mountains. And at this time of year, it's not unusual for a storm to blow through and you get a little rain. And he sits there and he digests it and there's peace and quiet for about a minute and a half. And then he's looking straight ahead and he says, why don't you move it to another weekend when it doesn't rain? To which you can't respond. Now, you're the recipient of the Community Award. Congratulations on that. You're also co-founder of Grassroots Baseball. Will you tell us a little bit about that organization and what made you come up with that idea? Absolutely. Grassroots Baseball uh, is a... Uh, a organization I founded with my uh, my partner, Jean Pruth, uh, who's uh, an incredible photographer, combining her photography uh, uh, as a member of the Sony community, Sony Alpha community, with my Hall of Fame experience, uh, was a great uh, great way for us to give back uh, to young people. So the, the, the mission of Grassroots Baseball is to promote the amateur game around the globe and give back to hopefully grow the game in underprivileged and underserved communities. And we launched it last year, Meredith, along uh, Route 66. We thought, what better way to tie baseball and Americana together than with the Mother Road? And uh, this year, we had plans to go through Puerto Rico, stage a number of clinics, uh, and do that as well. But the, the, the program last year launched so successfully, we visited 10 boys and girls clubs in eight states. Bruce Gossage was our national spokesman. We used guys like Trevor Hoffman, George Brett, Jim Tomey, uh, Billy Hatcher, uh, Johnny Bench, to go into communities in the areas where they grew up and talk to kids about, hey, if I grew up here and did this, so can you. And then we gave them each a Rawlings Club in baseball with the hopes of maybe growing the game a little bit. And really successful and looking forward to growing that program again this year. I imagine it's a little bit of an uphill climb because when you look at other sports, it's very easy to get kids involved. Basketball, you just need a hoop and a ball. Uh, baseball, you need a little bit more equipment, and it's not an individual sport. You need more than one person to play. So how do you tackle those issues? How have you been raising money for it? Well, we were fortunate to uh, have a number of good uh, good partners in our stable that helped us. Uh, you know, we, used, uh, we worked with Rawlings, the Diamondbacks, the Padres last year. Marriott Hotel stepped up and helped. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a challenge, but... Uh, the good of giving back uh, really is infectious. And if we can play a small role in developing in underprivileged communities and giving kids a chance, there was a great moment we had at the uh, Union League Boys and Girls Club uh, in Chicago where there was a young boy that uh, Goose, uh, Goose picked out of the crowd and started playing catch with, and this kid was really shy. And by the end of the experience, this kid was really having a lot of confidence. Afterwards, his, his older brother came over and said, I've never seen my brother that engaged. The young man then came over to Goose and thanked him and said, because of you, I'm now going out for summer baseball. And that's just one of a number of stories we heard across the country. And so on a small level, it's great to be able to grow the game and give back in that way. That's awesome. And if just one person gets involved that wouldn't have been involved before, I imagine that gives you so much satisfaction. And I bet a lot of people throughout Major League Baseball are anxious to help out with this. They're really willing to help out with this particular cause. Absolutely. Absolutely, Meredith. We're all in this together as a baseball community. And, you know, the game is, uh, you know, outside of current present conditions, which we're all uh, so, uh, you know, being careful about. The game is so healthy at the major and minor league level. And if we can continue to grow it at the grassroots level where uh, kids who don't have that opportunity because of travel ball, they can't afford to play travel ball, get left behind. That's not fair. It shouldn't be that way. And all of us can make a difference to assure that there's the best people playing baseball and that everybody has that opportunity to participate if they'd like. It's a great cause. Thank you so much. Former president, they think you have a great deal of insight. All right, Meredith, bring it on. What's happening this year? New York Yankees fans want to know, will there be a ceremony they want to see Jeter in Cooperstown? I really don't know. That's the $64,000 question, and... Uh, uh, I have a great deal of respect for Derek Jeter. I'll give you a very quick Derek Jeter story. And, uh, if I could go on a quick tangent, sure. I was talking to him in spring training uh, the year he was going for his 3,000th hit, 
about what he might like to donate to Cooperstown. And when we were done speaking, he asked, my daughter, who's 11, is a huge fan. And uh, he said, is she a Yankee fan? I said, she is, but her older brother, Aaron, is a much bigger Red Sox fan. And he looked me straight in the eye and he said, Jeff, everybody knows girls are smarter than boys. And you want to see an 11-year-old light up, that'll do it. I don't know what the prognosis <laughs> I don't know what the prognosis is for this summer. We obviously have a serious situation on our hands, but I know that the staff in Cooperstown uh, is giving it serious consideration and they'll do right by what makes sense for the country and assure that Derek gets his due. Another person wants to know, do you think Bonds and Clemens will ultimately get it? Great question. And again, you need a crystal ball. Um, the way, things, the way voting is tracking now, it doesn't look likely that the writers will elect them during their tenure. You never know what happens to them after that. Uh, the Hall of Fame has rules for election that uh, have precluded these guys from uh, making that last jump. Uh, I know they're represented there through their history. Whether they ever earn election is a great question. What I don't know the answer to. One guy that I have a sneaking suspicion will wind up in Cooperstown is C.C. Sabathia. Would you tend to agree with that? You can't disagree with that, Meredith. Um, you know, now that I don't work at the Hall of Fame, I can have an opinion about it a little bit. And uh, you don't know where the writers will go, but when you look at what embodies a Hall of Famer, it's contributions to the teams for whom he played, uh, intertwined with character, integrity, and sportsmanship. And there's nobody that exudes those characteristics more so than CeCe Sabathia. Uh, great competitor, also a, an incredible leader, giving back, great for your team. It would be very hard to reject them. There's no doubt about it. And you talked about some of the efforts you're making to try to get kids in the inner city involved with baseball. CC and his wife, Amber Sabathia, have been so involved with boys and girls clubs, both in New York, out in Vallejo. They do a ton of great charity work as well. And they've recently been in the Bronx bringing food to people during this COVID-19 crisis. Can't say anything but good things about the Sabathias. No, you really can't. And, uh, you know, he had that great up upbringing out here in San Francisco where I live now. And uh, he's taken that around the country to Cleveland, New York, Milwaukee. And he and his wife should both be commended for uh, not only how they represent themselves, but the way they give back. It's really an inspiration. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. And congratulations on the award. I hope to see you next year at the actual awards dinner. <laughs> You absolutely will, Meredith. I appreciate your time and being on with you, and I'm grateful to the Yogi Museum for the incredible honor. Jeff, we'll talk soon. All right, Meredith. All right. Well, we were talking a little bit about C.C. Sabathia. He is this year's recipient for the Teammate Award, and as if he needs an introduction, I think we all know how great C.C. Sabathia was during his playing career, but let me refresh your memory. 19 seasons he played in Major League Baseball, six-time All-Star, 2009 World Series winner, Cy Young Award winner, 3,093 strikeouts. But every time I spoke to him in his final season, he would tell me, while the numbers are nice, I want to be known as somebody that was a good teammate. And that is why he is getting the teammate award. Everyone in that clubhouse respected CC Sabathia, and everybody in that clubhouse knew they could go to CC Sabathia with any problems that they had on or off the field. Now we will try to go to CC Sabathia. Let's see if he's there with us. Yes, he is. Awesome. Dun, 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 dun. There he is. Hey, CC, how you doing? How you doing? I'm great. You? Good. Growing this beard out. <laughs> it's the typical post Yankees beard, right? It is. It really is. It's something that like I've been dreaming to do for the past eleven, year, twelve years. So uh, it's good to get it, get it, get it, get it growing now. It's funny. First of all, congratulations on the teammate award. I know for you, being a good teammate was oh so important. Yeah, for sure. And it started in Cleveland. You know, that's just something that they preach to us. It's just you know, take care of your guys, be a good teammate. You know, do whatever you can on it and off the field. Um, to hang out and kind of build that camaraderie and to kind of just carry it over for my whole career. But it's something that I really learned with the Indians, for sure. Now, I know you've spent a lot of time with Yogi over the years when he was still with us. You're wearing the Yogi shirt right now. What was always. your time with Yogi like? It was, it, was, uh, it was always fun. From the time I got to the Yankees, um, him being down in spring training, you know, watching my bullpens. Anytime I was throwing out on the field, he would come out there. Um, just him telling me stories about how it was back in the old days, you know, spring training, um, Jackie's still at home, like he was still mad about that. Um, we had some great times. And even, 
you know, Gator, you know, cooking frog legs for us. And we would go over to his hotel room and, you know, hang out and just, you know, I could get a chance to hang out and talk to those guys. It was uh, incredible for me. Um, it just lets you know what, what, what being a Yankee is about. And he embodied all of that. When you think about that, the fact that he won 10 championships and loved nothing more than going to talk to you guys maybe shed some wisdom on you during spring training. I imagine that everybody was trying to get next to him to hear some of those stories. Yeah, for sure. And it, it just left a huge impact on me um, in the way that this is what the Yankees is about. You know, so much history, um, so much pride. And like I said, he just carried that around all the time and it just made you want to be around him. And he was one of the funniest guys um, that I've ever been, ever been around. So uh, I really, really just enjoy all of my time with him all the time. He was always making people laugh, and he was always saying outrageous things at times where you're just like, yep, that's Yogi, that's Yogi. <laughs> Is there one thing that stands out to you, one story you told, and you're like, Yogi, that's not right, come on. Um, no, nah, I mean, the funniest thing, like, every time he just called me Slim. Like, obviously, you know, I was 315 pounds when I first got here, so, he, I mean, and it's the first thing he said, how you doing, Slim? Like, and just from there, we just hit it off, so... Um, you know, funny stories. I mean, he would just always like tell me about spring training, how they would have to put, you know, cars um, on the boat to take them across to to go play in different places, parts of uh, of Florida and different places. And um, you know, it was just it's just a cool thing. This year, a little different with no baseball for different reasons. But you and your wife Amber have been doing great work in the Bronx. How did all that come together, delivering food for those in need? Um, it really just came together, just us knowing the need um, that, you know, people in the Bronx and in Vallejo were going to be hit hard by this. And, um, you know, we, we partnered with the Boys and Girls Club. Um, the first four weeks, we partnered with Fresh Direct, um, you know, and, and had them with the, with the, five, with the Feed the Five Boroughs um, mm -hmm. initiative. Um, President, uh, Bronx President Ruben Diaz was out there, um, you know, helping us pass out the food. And, um, you know, this, this week we moved it to the Boys and Girls Club. Um, we packed up all the food ourselves together, and uh, we were able to hand out food. So we're just excited and, and blessed to be able to be in this position to help people um, in a time of need, for sure. The Boys and Girls Club has been something that has been near and dear to your heart for a very long time. How much do you enjoy that work with those inner city kids? Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's what it, really what I'm all about. You know, um, I grew up in a Boys and Girls Club, and I was on the phone with Dave Stewart today, and we were talking about the time that I met him. I was nine years old in my Boys and Girls Club, and it changed my life. You know, it set me on the course to, to be where um, if I can make that impact on just one kid, it's, it's it for me. Baseball going on right now, as we know, this thing is bigger than baseball, but does that make it easier to not miss it, maybe, because you don't have to watch it every day? <laughs> Yeah, it, it has been making it a little easy to know that, that nobody's really playing right now. Um, but I do miss baseball. Like, I look, I was looking forward to getting out to the stadium, you know, sitting in Legends, eating some food, hanging out and watching the game. Um, so it, it makes it a little hard that there's no baseball being played, really no sports. But I, I, I kind of do miss the game. I want to see, you know, Hixie and Judgy and Glaber and those guys doing their thing. So, um, you know, hopefully we get it back soon and those guys will be healthy. You were there for a quick second in spring training. How did the squad look to you in that limited amount of time that you saw them? Team is built to win right now. And and I felt that for the last couple of years. The reason why I was scratching and clawing and trying to hang on to to get a get a part of that World Series, I know they're right there, they're close, um, knocking at the door and, and you know, hopefully um, in the next couple of years, you know, we'll be able to, to, to get over that hill. Everyone has their fingers crossed uh, in that regard. Now the yogi shirt you're wearing. Just your favorite shirt, as you feel like it brings you closer to Yogi. Why do you like that shirt so much, Cece? Uh, it's my favorite shirt. Obviously, he's one of my favorite guys. Uh, but, I mean, you saw me in the clubhouse. I wear them every day. I, I probably got, like, 15 of them. And I literally <laughs> wear it every day. Like, this is, like, my everyday. They got the hoodie now, and I've, and I've got two of those, and they're uh, they're all washed. And, you know, I've been wearing it every time I go out. So, um, you know, it's just one of my favorite shirts, and, and uh, it's something I just throw on literally every day. They appreciate that, too, because they said since you started wearing it, the sales have doubled and tripled, and you can find that shirt on Yogi yogibaramuseum.org. So keep wearing it, Cece. Keep wearing it. <laughs> for uh, sure. Do you have time for a couple of questions from fans? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Let me see what we've got here. C. 
CC, to keep my mind, mind on baseball, I want you to know that I've been using you and playing as you for MLB, the show. We won the World Series last season, so thank you for that. Have you been playing the show at all? Nah, my boys play the show, though. They, uh, since, especially since we've been quarantined, they, they've been locked in, um, doing the my play there, like trying to get into the big leagues and stuff. I got a PlayStation. I'm thinking about if we get, you know, we get locked in for another month, I might have to open that thing up and, and start playing. I haven't played video games since I had kids. I was a big gamer when I was younger, and as I got older, and I had to get back to it. Your wife, Amber, weighed in and said you have at least 30 of those shirts in your closet right now. <laughs> this one in my Guardy shirt. The Guardy, the Guardy. The red one. I love That's that one, too. too. I like that one, too. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, favorite moment of your career and your favorite teammate of all time? Oh, wow. Um, man, I had, I had some really, really good teams. I think the when I look back on it, I think my favorite teammate that I played with was Ellis Burks. Um, you know, I got to the big leagues. I was 20 years old. He bought me my first suit and really just showed me how to be a big leaguer. And without him, I probably wouldn't have survived a week in the big league. So um, I have to give him all the credit for how kind of how it turned out. So... Um, my favorite moment was definitely winning the World Series. Um, that last out, you know, that, that ground ball to Robbie and just being able to run out on the field as a champion, as a Yankee, um, is something that I think little kids dream about and I got a chance to live it. So that was definitely my best moment. When that final out happens, does it even feel real? Do you remember that moment vividly or did it happen so fast you were almost in disbelief that this is what was happening? You know what? I remember that moment just because the first thing I, me and AJ did was, like, grab each other. We yeah. were sitting next to each other, trying not to be nervous, trying not to look at each other. And then we just grabbed each other and, like, ran out on the field. So, honestly, I remember everything about that night and, and uh, the celebration and everything. So, it was, uh, it, like I said, it was just something that you dream about as a kid. And to be able to win here in the Bronx in New York in the brand new stadium was, uh, was incredible. What was that parade like, take me back there? And then just the days and weeks and months after, as you walk through the city, I imagine people would be coming up to you left and right. Not like they aren't anyway, but especially during <laughs> that time. No, especially during that time. Just, you know, um, you know, the, the parade is just, like I said, I mean, it's, you can't, it's hard to describe. Like, you, it's a parade for you. You're in it. But you watch these things all the time on TV as a kid. So to actually be in it and, and you know, to be a huge sports fan like I am, and I keep saying the win here in New York is something hard to do. So um, to be able to do it here is just so special for me being a Cali kid, man. It was it was amazing. And just it, the, the months after, it's just a party. You know, the whole time until spring training, everywhere you go, you know, it's just like you just won that night. So uh, it, it was incredible. It was a fun uh, couple months. And, you know, the fact that I was living here, I didn't go home in the offseason. You know, I made this my home, uh, made it even more special. How often do you wear the ring? I don't even know where it is. My wife probably chime in and tell you where it is. I hope it's somewhere <laughs> safe. I'm praying. I'm praying. <laughs> but think about how wild this is. Could you imagine, like, Yogi having 10 rings? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, just, the, uh, I mean, even Jeter and, and, and Andy having five. You know what I mean? Like, that's amazing. And, you know, for Yogi to win 10 times, uh, I mean, just embodies who he is in his Hall of Fame career and um, the Hall of Fame on and off the field, really, to be honest. Now, Bruce Beck is also getting an award tonight. I know you know Bruce Beck from NBC4. He said, you are great, CC. He wanted you to know it. Uh, any memories from doing some interviews with Bruce Beck? He's always intense and he's one of the hardest working guys uh, in New York sports, to be honest with you. No, I mean, just because he, he works so hard, he's so intense that you always just feel like you want to give him a good interview. You know, you always feel like you want to be on, you want to, you know, uh, do as good a job as, as he wants you to do. So, um, no, I mean, I remember that very first offseason, uh, I went down to the studio and I did the interview. He gave me a, a, a gift card to go to Del Frisco's and we went right away. Like, it was, nice. it was a great Right show. to Del Frisco's, right? <laughs> <laughs> you knew that already, the program. Uh, before I let you go here, one final person wants to know, what's been the best part for you about being retired? Uh, being here with my family. You know, I have four kids. They're getting older. Um, you know, this would have been my son's first varsity uh, baseball season. Um, hopefully they get to play a little bit in the summer or something. Um, but just being here, being home, um, I'm looking at it as a blessing. You know, I, I spend so much time away, especially during this time, um, to have them here home every day. 
um, all together. It's, it's been a lot of fun. So uh, I'm just taking this time to, to get kind of reacquainted with my family. and um, But it's been great. Have the girls made you join TikTok yet? Man, everybody in this whole family is trying to get me to do TikTok. It's not happening. No? <laughs> you never know. We, in a couple more weeks of this, you might be on it. A couple more weeks, I'm going to be playing my PlayStation. <laughs> All right, CC, thank you so much for the time. Congratulations on the award, and hopefully we'll see you next year at the dinner. Definitely. You'll see me next year. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And that is CC Sabathia. One of the best in baseball, man. That smile says it all. We also have Bruce Beck. He was talking about him a little bit. That is going to join us. He was doing his sportscast in the 6 o'clock hour, but I think he is off now. And let's see if we can find Bruce. Bruce Beck coming up. Add. If I do it correctly. Hi, Bruce. Hey, Meredith. How was the sportscast? The sportscast went, went fine. I mean, this is an NFL draft like none other. Everybody's home. No one knows what the heck to expect. They hope they don't have technical glitches. There's so many questions, but Roger Goodell gave us a great tour of his basement today, so I think it's going to be pretty cool, and I think it'll work out. They, they tried on Monday. They had a lot of glitches, but tonight they think that they're going to get it together. Well, I have to tell you, I was a little hesitant to see how this first virtual Yogi Berra Awards, whatever this is, would go. So far, no glitches, Bruce. We're, we're doing okay That's so far. Great. CC said I'm intense. I just, I have to lighten up. I mean, I, I covered <laughs> CC three times with Amber doing their pitching. DM. I've covered him in so many places. They are a phenomenal power couple. Amber's really the boss. Um, but <laughs> CC is incredibly cooperative. One of the guys that people, I think, will always look back at and say, a great Yankee, first of all. And besides that, they'll say, total gentleman. Came in 2009, won a world championship. And he always did it with, with class. He was always there. And he's right. I would be in his locker. CC, I need you today. Need you. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I had a couple of minutes. I had to run back to the studio, and he'd always say, "All right, I'll I'll do it. I'll meet you out there after I stretch." And so he's really a, a great guy, and uh, had a wonderful run. And uh, I'm very proud to have uh, built a nice relationship, even if it was a little intense. You're a great guy. You've had a wonderful run over 20 years at. NBC New York, Channel 4 in New York City. What has that ride been like, Bruce? Because not everybody can stick around as long as you have. You have to be good, you have to be committed, and you have to want to as well. Local teams, local themes, local stories. That's always been my mantra. And just grinding away and trying to, to bring the fans of New York closer to the action. We've had so many great teams. We have nine professional teams in the four sports. How lucky am I? How blessed am I to have an opportunity to do something like this that I love, that I carry a thrill since I couldn't make it in the NBA. And I'm dealing with coaches, general managers, owners, players, covering the teams of New York. And when the teams are in the playoffs, there's nothing like it. We've had a little bit of a dry spell in the last few years, but we had a heck of a run, Meredith, around 2007, 2008, 2000. Like, there was a stretch there in the 90s where every team was winning. And I've, I've covered two Super Bowls, uh, championship Super Bowls by the Giants. Uh, I've covered uh, several others. Uh, I've covered the Yankees winning five titles. Um, I've covered eight Olympics. So it's it's been a blessing. It's been a great opportunity. And I just try to stay up from 12 o'clock at night till 3 in the morning to grind away. And that way, I still continue to work. Well, that was my question, because you are literally everywhere when it comes to work, but you still find the time to give back to the community. I don't understand how you fit it all in. You're almost like a superhuman. You need sleep, Bruce. How do you do it? I don't really need sleep. I'll get sleep someday. Um, the thing is, my folks taught me that uh, receiving is nice, giving is nicer, and giving back is nicest of all. And I think it's a great opportunity to connect with the athletes. I posted... Derek Jeter's Turn 2 Foundation dinner many times. Uh, Joe Namath's March of Dimes Golf Tournament at Beth Page a zillion times. Tom Coughlin's J-Fund Foundation dinner. 
every year except this past year. And I think sometimes it's, it's a great way to connect with the athletes because you get a chance to see them in a different light. And I just believe that others need our help. I, I love the role of mentorship. I love the role of giving back. I love the chance to help others. And, and I learn from, from my folks at a very young age. And I try to carry it on to my kids uh, and hopefully that they've learned as well. Bruce, we need more people like you in the world. Thank you for all the great work that you've done in that way. Now, I, I know you're also a very big fan of the Yogi Berra Museum. You've been there on the campus of, of Montclair University. What is it about the museum that draws you to it? I mean, the museum and Yogi was always about education. Uh, he loved doing his, his individual stuff with the scouts, so he was a very charitable guy. But he loves kids, and he loves kids learning. We did our sports broadcasting camp there for many years, I and Eagle and I. And Yogi would, the, the highlight of the week was Thursday when Yogi would make his appearance. We never knew exactly what time. We'd talk to Dale and Dave Kaplan back then. Okay, what time is, what time is Yogi going to come out? And he, he likes to come out and not make a speech. He wanted to come out and answer questions. That's what he was best at. And I would do a little introduction usually. And then Ian and I would talk to him a little bit. And Yogi would just put his hands on his hips and go, any questions? And, it was just, <laughs> and everybody just, Mr. Barra, Mr. Barra. And, and they loved it. And he loved it. It was one of his highlights of his week. He just loves to see young people as sponges picking up stuff. And that's what made it so amazingly special. He never missed one of our camps. I now do a sports broadcasting camp in Westchester. That's just my own camp. But I and Eagle and I did our camp together for 15 years, and we loved every minute of it. And Yogi was a big part of it. And, and Dale and Tim and Larry, we would see all the guys and, and, and Joni. And, and it was, it's just an amazing group of people. I built a wonderful relationship. Now, I have to tell you, Todd Frazier joined into this one. He said, Bruce, I'm guessing that's his way of saying congratulations, Bruce. Congratulations Thank on the award. Uh, see, Thank you. But Todd's, Todd's crazy. He's the greatest. He is. He was, he was very fun to cover, and I know he went over the Met, so you still saw him when he was over there, but you know he's been in and out uh, over the past couple of years. As far as Yogi is concerned, I know there's probably not a spring training in the last 20 years that you've missed. When Yogi was around down in Tampa, Anything in particular you remember about the way he would interact with people down there? He was great in Tampa. He loved people coming up to him and asking questions. Another thing, another area where he excelled. My thing with Yogi was Old Timers Day. We had this thing where he would go out the back door to meet me because he really didn't do many interviews back then. He would hang in Joe Torrey's office, and when I came in, I would look at him, and Yogi would go, it was our spot. It was in the hallway in the old stadium outside the back door. And I would always do my interview there with him every year. He never missed it. Um, one of my favorite Yogi stories was at one of his golf tournaments in Montclair. Yogi used to stay on a hole, a par three, and people would come through. They'd pay $50 for a baseball that he would sign if they hit the ball inside of his ball. It was free. If, if they didn't, they would make the contribution, and that's the way it went. But if you got your ball inside of Yogi's ball on the par three, he had a shot with every group, then you got the ball signed by Yogi. All right, so so the day goes on. I have a great outing day. I'm playing my foursome. We didn't win. Some of those undulating greens at Montclair, including the ninth when you come in there, it's crazy. But um, I see Yogi. And he, go, he always called me Beck. Like, that was one of his things. Beck, Beck. I, and I, Yogi, Yogi, what's going on? Beck, Beck, come here. I got to tell you something. I'm calling the Star Ledger. I said, wait, you're calling the Star Ledger. Star Ledger had a thing on Sundays where they would post hole-in-ones from anywhere in New Jersey. And they would list each club, Mountain Ridge, whatever it might be, you know, and, and the name of the hole and the name of the person that got the hole-in-one with what club distance the whole bit yogi goes i'm calling the star ledger i said what are you talking about he goes i got a hole in one this was at the tournament he stayed in that hole all day long and he's hitting balls he says to me i say yogi you can't do it you can't call the star ledger you have to play 18 holes he goes i played that hole 18 times <laughs> i said i guess you're right that's a yogiism without even realizing 
his yogiisms, like you know, <laughs> when he talked about when you take the fork, when you see the fork of the road, take it. That was basically his home in in Montclair, New Jersey. That's what it was. When you get there in Upper Mountain Avenue, you take the move. So so many of his yogiisms, and Dale used to talk to me about this, and 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 Lindsay and Gretchen, they'll all tell you that yogiisms are natural things. They're things that he says, and we just turn them into you know yogiisms because. It is what he is and was for so many years. And I miss him. And Carmine, Carmen was such a beautiful woman. I loved her dearly. I have her picture here on the wall. They, they were such special people and such a special couple. And Yogi idolized her and the whole family. Did. She was the matriarch and she made it all go. And you got the sense he was obsessed with her from day one. You yes. Know? He was just so in love with her. It was beautiful to watch every time they it were It was. That, that stuff doesn't happen much anymore. I'm married 39 years, almost 40. I told a story in the news last night that the Chargers changed their colors this year. Their new uniform is this powder blue. And on the backside of my, on my report, people like when you're real. I think one of the things they love about news is that they can connect to you and you can be real. So I said – Powder blue. I remember falling in love with a girl who drove a powder blue Cutlass Supreme in 1979. My father gave her the CB handle, classy chassis. I married that girl in 1980. And right now, I'm quarantined with that view. <laughs> People loved it. And, and it was true. Hey, I have to ask you, is that a picture with you and Yogi right over your shoulder? It is. This is a classic. Oh, I love it. This is a classic old yogi shot from, I think, it, look at me, uh, one of those golf tournaments. Is that is that what he played the whole 18 times after the whole, whole one? <laughs> it might have not been that day, but he definitely was a part of it. I've got a great picture up here, the core floor, which is classic. It was from a Steiner sports event that I was covering. And it's really, it's a really good one because it's hard to get those guys all together, you know? Oh, yeah. And, and, and the, the photographer said, jump in there, jump in there, Bruce. I'm trying to fix the lighting. I was like, okay, because I was getting ready to do a live interview with these guys. And I have that. And over my older shoulder here, the great Anthony Causey, oh. who, who passed the coronavirus. But we loved him. It was such a hard week. And uh, he was such a special human being who I will always love. And uh, it made this period difficult because all of a sudden you have a name and a fate to this uh epide this pandemic and we will we will always feel that anthony was a big part of the new york sports scene he was part of the fabric of it and i will love him forever he was wonderful i will forever remember that great big smile he always had on his face regardless of the conditions if it were a four-hour game he wouldn't care cause he would be somewhere smiling in that stadium. He was such a yeah. good dude. Such uh, a special. I had a wonderful relationship. We went to so many dinners together on the road. So this one was like a dagger when it, when it happened, Meredith. But we're trying to uh, be positive now. I cried a lot. But going forward, I'm going to try to remember Anthony only with, with, with smiles and joy and great memories. With the good stuff. And, and like Yogi Berra, he just loved his family so much. Family was everything to him. Uh, do you have a couple more minutes, Bruce? Can we answer some yeah. questions from the crowd? Sure, sure. Second here. Tim Bear is watching. What's up, Tim? <laughs> How are you guys? Let's That's see it. if I can find Bear of family. Do you have any questions? Fire them away here. Let's see what's going on. How's it going today? How's it going with you, Meredith? Uh, we miss you. Okay. Um, How long did you know Yogi, Bruce? When did you first meet him? Do you remember your first meeting? I first met Yogi when I was with Suburban Cablevision TV3. I started there out of college in 1978, and that was the first time I met him. I remember it being at an outing, uh, and then I remember meeting him also in Montclair, not far from Montclair. They used to have a Valerie Fund dinner, which was held at the old, I want to say it was held at, uh, not the Chanticleer, it was... Somewhere right there in West Orange, uh, and I can't think of the name. And, and I would always run into it these these different events, and he would always do an interview for me. So so that made it kind of special. The Manor, the great The Manor, it was called in West Orange. 
Well, Bruce, I just want to say congratulations again on your award. We will get it to you eventually. Maybe you have it already, but hopefully you will join us next year for the actual awards dinner. We would love to see your face. I will, and Tom Coughlin was going to present me with this humanitarian award, which is such an honor. I think so much of the museum. So let's uh, let's send contributions, even if it's not you know a big night tonight that we're we're there, or it's not what you want to do for the future. The Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center is a special place, and it's remembering the great Yogi Berra, his wife Carmen, and the, and the, and the Berra family. They are royalty in New Jersey. So, Meredith, it's, it's really phenomenal to get an honor, uh, such as the Humanitarian Award, because my parents, that's what they, they raised me to give back to society, and I'll look forward to being there next year. I can't wait. We can't wait to see you. You have yourself a great evening and a good sportscast later on in the night. Thanks. Tonight's the draft. We actually have sports for the first time in months. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I'll talk to you soon, Bruce. All right. Be safe, Meredith. Thanks so much. Yep. Bye. Okay. And that was Bruce Beck, the winner of the Humanitarian Award. Uh, just a couple notes for everyone there. If you have not yet been to the museum, visit yogiberramuseum.org. You can find out all types of information. They're currently closed. When everything comes down, they will, in fact, reopen. But while they are closed, there's tons of programs that you can access on the web for middle school to high school students. They include race, immigration, gender, financial literacy, some really great stuff, guys, so check it out. If you'd like to contribute, you can certainly go on there and make a donation as well. Or if you like that shirt that CC Sabathia was wearing and has worn over the last couple of years that says Yogi, it also comes in a hoodie. So you could go purchase one of those there too. The proceeds, some of the proceeds go to the Yogi Bear Museum. Also noteworthy, when we wrap up here, they're actually going to be streaming highlights of past awards dinners on their Facebook page, as well as on the actual museum website. So we'll give you a couple minutes to take a break. And then, you know what? Grab yourself a tea, grab yourself a drink, and sit down and enjoy some of the great memories over the years. For everyone at the Yogi Museum, I just want to thank you for watching. This was a lot of fun. My very first virtual awards.